Hey everybody, welcome to Overtime at WTTS Radio. You're live with your host, Shell Kalabidi. How y'all doing? Happy Tuesday to you. Hope you had a grand day. I had a grand day. I had some bumps in the road. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, um, but I did have a grand day overall. I'm still here. I'm here. Hey, listen, y'all, I'm just a lady who decided to dream again. Uh, after I put a lot of dreams down, I picked them back up and I'm dreaming again. And so I'm, I'm here for all of you all who decided to dream again. And maybe you haven't decided whether or not you want to pick some things up that you let go. But we'll talk about that tonight as well. Um, I'm just so glad that you tuned in with me. I'm privileged every time I get the opportunity to share with you because I understand you could be doing so much more. And so thank you for allowing me in your hearts and in your space tonight. I want to just take a sidebar really quick and just talk about something that uh, I experienced today. You know, fire is an interesting thing. I found out that in my life that the higher the flame becomes, uh, the more the dross in my life is burnt away. Also, the better the gems, the more bright the gems that it produces. You know, I've learned over time to not be offended um, when something hits my life that I don't really like or when God sends me someone who is there to help me uh, and I, I'm not ready to move just yet. Um, and so God began to turn up the flame. And I had a situation today where uh, someone that's helping me even with this project here, um, their silence spoke volume to me. And it really wasn't uh, a time for me to get offended. It was a time for me to listen in the silence. You know, I put a post out a long time ago. I said, um, it says, uh, fall in love with the sound of silence because in it you will see more clearly. And sometimes um, silence has a sound, actually. It has vision as well. And a lot of times we're looking to hear a whole lot of words, and sometimes it's not what people are saying that you can hear, it's what they're not saying. And I'm just thankful to have people in my life right now that their silence speaks volume. I was speaking to someone about just trying to get out of my comfort zone about a particular thing uh, relating to Facebook and social media. You know, you guys, I'm going to tell you, I'm really not that social media person, but you know, when you have to change, you got to change. You just got to change. And as I was listening uh, to this person, uh, the word of God came to me. It says uh, Psalm 110, 119 and 165. It says, great peace of those who love thy law and nothing shall offend thee and nothing shall offend thee. I mean, nothing shall offend thee. When you have great peace, nothing shall offend you. It says great peace of those who love thy law. Well, the law is supposed to soothe you. It's supposed to be better for your life, you know? And so when you have a place in your heart where you have allowed the word of God and allowed um, the ways of God to be at home in you, then you learn not to be offended so easily. You learn that when things come to you, they are meant to be better for you, even if it seems unfavorable at the moment, even if it does. Most times when it's unfavorable, that's most of the, most times is when it's the best for you. And so I've learned to appreciate the flames that don't really say a whole lot, but they speak volume to me. And after I allow myself to move past my emotions and really look at the real deal, the, real, the reality of it was that I was slacking on something that I should have done weeks ago. That's the reality. And see, I'm I'm gonna I'm really big on being accountable because we are people that we want to make everybody our issue and everybody our fault but us. And so what happens is you're ineffective. You're really ineffective because who are you gonna help? If you can't allow yourself to look at the man in the mirror, you will not be able to help someone else because you can't see the beam in your own eye. You have to be able to see what's in your eye to be able to help someone else. And so I just wanna um Thank that person. You know who you are. Thank you because your silence spoke volume to me and it made me get up and do what I was supposed to do today. Today, you know, because delayed response is really disobedience. You're really not really kidding anybody but yourself. You're really letting yourself down. You're disappointing yourself. And so a lot of times we, you know, make these, uh, you know, the, the saying, you know, well, God knows my heart and, oh, well, that's just how I am. That's just the way I am. Well, if that's just the way you are, is that, how is that working for you? Is that good? Did it produce what you wanted? Did it really give you the results that you were looking for? Do you have what you need? Because that's just the way you are. And so you took your time to get it done. I mean, do you really, are you satisfied with the outcome of that? And, you know, we talk about this heart thing all the time. Oh, unless God knows my heart. You know, whenever you talk to people about themselves, <laughs> they always say, well, God knows my heart. 
I love that. I love it and I dislike it at the same time because what I know is that the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. It's desperately wicked above all. And so that means that, yeah, God does know your heart because we don't. We don't know our hearts. You know, we don't know that our hearts are made to be lazy over time because they're things that we don't want to address or they're things that we've decided that, you know, well, I'll just get to it when I get to it or I'll address that later. And when you look up, you know, later is down the road. Later is like a yesteryear, you know, and so that's my little soapbox on that. I just want to, I'm grateful because uh, I, I, I said, God, don't let it be named in me that after I mentor, teach, and, and, and encourage people that I become guilty or I become uh, 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 under bondage of the same thing that, I, uh, that you used me to help release people from. I don't want to be guilty of that. And so I'm thankful um, just that I was allowed in that moment to be humbled in my mind to see, no, you in error. I was in error. You just been dragging your feet. And so, yeah, I know you got things on your plate, but that's no excuse because this is what you said you wanted to do. And so, um, and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm on point now and I'm back on point, but let me, let me just, um, go to this, this other point I wanted to make, you know, I, I see a lot of young people throughout the day. Um, I'm, I'm, something I saw not long ago really hurt my heart. I saw some, Someone was very disrespectful to someone that was elderly. And, you know, I thought back about when I was younger. We had this thing now. You know, I heard this this young guy, young kid say, uh, well, you, if I don't want to respect those who respect me. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, even 25, sometimes you don't really know what respect is. And really, respect is, is kind of earned. It really is. Um, but I will say this to young audiences. If you're out there, if you some young people are watching, if you have children, you know, I remember when I was 25 and I thought I knew. I really did think that I knew things that, you know, that, that old saying your mother says, you think you know, but you really don't know. And in my mind, I was thinking I had something that she didn't know. And that was so off and wrong. But, you know, as I thought about it today, I said, I remember when I was young. So I say to young people, Please be sensitive today because your today will be yesterday in just a short few years. And then you're yet, and then, and then it will be remember when, and then it will be years ago. Remember that? So just be mindful to be sensitive uh, to people because you're vibrant, you're your best years of your life. And that's, you know, if you are blessed to see uh, many more, you'll remember how it was. And, and hopefully you will have another level of sensitivity, um, as I even say this now, to those who have gone the route you've already gone. You don't know as much as you think you do. Trust me, you don't. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go back to my topic today, my sidebar. That was my sidebar for today. So I'm going to go back to what was on my heart today. And I was thinking about destiny and purpose. And, you know, we hear so much all the time about destiny and about purpose and um, people, you know, I remember about mm, maybe 16 years ago when I was first introduced to the whole idea of purpose and, and destiny and everything was, I got to get in my purpose. I got to get my blessing. I have to get in my blessing. I have to get in my purpose. And I became so overwhelmed with the idea of getting into my purpose and, and finding my destiny that it actually walked me down a road of great turmoil, you know. Uh, anything that you are unjustly balanced in can really do you very much harm. Anything can that you are not completely balanced in uh, can do you harm. Even as we think about the ideas of our success, um, you know, ambition, our family, sometimes we can put too much emphasis on one thing that we become, uh, we begin to bring harm to ourselves. And, and so, uh, on this journey, looking for my destiny, looking for my purpose, I was so, I was just so, just, I don't, I don't want to say focused. I was obsessed. And as a result, it walked me in a, down a, a, a road where I began to look for outside validation so much so that it plagued my life. It literally plagued my life. Um, and so, you know, I want to talk about how you, what, what destination and purpose looks like. I really want to talk about what it looks like. You know, it's not about, oh, it's a straight path and I'm going to stay on this path. Sometimes you are going to get off the path. Sometimes you're going to be on the path and it's going to feel like um, 
I, I need, I, I can't do this anymore. I mean, I remember one day I was crying out to God. I said, God, if you're not going to do this, take the desire away. Like literally let me wake up tomorrow and let me not feel what I feel. Let me not have these dreams and ideas. Take it away because it is becoming overwhelming to me. It was becoming overwhelming. The idea, the, the time that it was taking to, have, to get it done, it was overwhelming me. And so what's happening is in my in my desire, in my overwhelmness, I begin to make very frivolous decisions, just making decisions just at the spare of the moment, just not being, not thinking them through and, and just not using wisdom at all. Took me in down a road of debt. I mean, it just did all kind of things. And, and so I, I just want to speak to that person. You know, Esther was a queen who was chose to be, she was actually chose to be a queen. She was a, a orphan. Her, her uncle raised her. And so uh, during that time that he raised her, he imparted some wisdom. He imparted some 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 truths that would bless her life down the road. But when he had gotten her as far as she could go, uh, no longer did she could she rely on um, his voice in her life. She had to then begin to rely on the next place that God was taking her to. And she had to trust that God would meet her there. So she was actually sent into a palace into a, around a group of people who were considered to be pagans. They didn't know God. They didn't, they didn't worship God. But she had to learn to still be who she was and let people who did not, who did not serve God, allow them to train her into her next destiny, into her destiny, actually. So listen to this. She comes from a godly home with a, a uncle who was teaching and training her and just imparting all kind of godly wisdom and pearls. And then to be taken from him and sent to a palace where they were, where there was no uh, reference of God whatsoever and trust that God will use these people to get her to her destiny. Now, here's my question. What are you willing to do? Like what, or how far are you willing to come out of your comfort zone and out of your box to trust God in an area that's unknown around a people that's unknown? even to God. I mean, God, yeah, we all belong to God, but there's some people that they, they, they don't recognize God. They just don't. And yet God still will use them. He will still use them to get you to your place of destiny. And so I pray that you never become so religious or so traditional or so locked up in your mind that you think that, you know, because destiny looks like a lot of different things. And a lot of times we get stuck in this one lane and we're like, oh, we're like, oh my God, I got to stay focused. I got to stay focused. Well, you know, God is bigger than your one little lane. I mean, he knows your lane, but he's bigger than the idea that's in your mind about it. You know, the, the, the main thing is that you Allow him to navigate your path. I talked about that last Tuesday. Allow him to navigate it. He's bigger than what you can think in your mind. And so I can remember missing opportunities. I remember one time I was asked to do a, a television show and I was doing makeup at the time. And so my, my makeup mentor was like, come on, I have this opportunity. Come on on the show with me. We're going to do a um, television show. Uh, Kwaisi and Fumi at the time, was was he had his own show. And so I said, well, no, I can't go because I'm, I'm going to miss Bible study. I never forget that day because God brought that back to my remembrance. He was like, Michelle, I'm bigger than your schedule. I set a divine appointment for you to get to and you was so stuck in the structure of your schedule that you missed. I'm going to bring it back, but you missed that. And so um, I'm going to take a little break and we're going to come back and talk about that. We're going to pay some bills and I'm going to come back and just elaborate on what that looks like in just a moment. All right. Hey, everybody, it's Shell. I'm back with you. Um, thank you so much for tuning back in with me. Uh, I just want to, you know, again, I want to reiterate that we have to be mindful when we say that we're going after our destinies and we're going after our, our, our purpose. And, and don't you know that God has already downloaded that in you? Like he knows how to beautifully, wonderfully um, unfold the plan right before your eyes. He really is the one that's holding the blueprint. And so I don't know, you know, there's, I talk to young people all the time, not young, young, middle age, older, you know, who um, they, they're so concerned with their life, with their life. And God's, your life is in God's hand. God got it. He really does have it. He doesn't really need your permission uh, or even your advice on how to unfold his plan in your life. You know, I'm reminded in the word, nobody asked God. God didn't ask anybody to 
you know, where do you put the sky? Where do you put the sun and the stars? And, you know, well, okay. Um, he didn't say, okay, Michelle, tell me how to divide the firmament. He didn't do all that. God just was God. He was just God. You know, like you said, he just did him. And so I just want to encourage you to please don't get, um, uh, overwhelmed with where you are, where you think you are, please. And whatever you do, don't get overwhelmed with your age. Don't do that, you know, but I want you to identify, you know, when you asking God for things and you're asking, you, you, you have something in your spirit that won't go away about your, you know, what it is that you feel that you need to do in this earth. Please allow, allow yourself to be unlocked uh, by, by your tradition, by your certain your, your, your time frames, uh, by your structure. You know, sometimes we're so structured that we don't allow God in to do something new so that we can experience him afresh. You know, your your destiny is actually going to unfold. You're always walking it out. And I don't care if right now, if you in a, I don't care if right now you're in a drug addict situation. Do you know that that's part of what you have to do when you get out of that thing? I promise you, if you're in it, you're not going to stay in it. Not not if you got, if you truly got destiny on you, if you truly got a purpose in this life and you know that you do, you can't stay there. You just can't stay there. And so sometimes we become so overwhelmed with, um, well, this is, I, I missed time. I messed up time. You didn't mess up time. You really didn't. You on time, but you got to walk it out. And I'll tell you, I know for a fact, I was so concerned and so obsessed. The very thing I was praying to God for, and then listen to this now, I missed an opportunity to do something that I had was in church and in Bible study and in church on Sundays, praying to God to do for me. But I missed it because I was going to go back to the house to pray to God to do that for me. And while I was going to go back to the house to pray to God, for, to God to do that for me, the door was open. But I was so busy focused on the structure of going to the house to pray to God to do it for me. I missed it when it came. Yeah. Now, I hope you got that. That's That's pretty powerful. Sometimes we are praying to God for things that we've missed. We are so focused and we are so structured and we're so religiously doing the thing that we it takes that, that we do to get to God to ask him for the thing or that we think that we're gonna do it, that we're gonna walk this way, we're gonna do it this way. So God, I'm gonna be right here when you come. And God said, Oh, really? Yeah, you are. I didn't tell you that's where to be. I came to you, I opened the door, and you went to church to ask me about the door that I just opened. Now I went to church to ask God about the door that he just opened. That's, that's, uh, I, I can't even put anything on that. That's just, just think about that for a minute. And so, you know, sometimes we get obsessed with, we are so obsessed that we are missing what we see in front of us all the time. It's like when Jesus said that uh, uh, he took and he rubbed the, the saliva on the man's eyes and he said, I see men as trees. He had to do it. Jesus said, let me do this again. Cause you're not seeing clearly. Sometimes, you know, we're so busy trying to see that we don't see. We, 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 we're blind. And a lot of times, you know, um, and I want to speak specifically to people who are um, in Christ, you know, allow the word yourself to be liberated in the word. For real. I, I want to say that. Allow yourself to be liberated in the world. Because honestly, don't nobody care about that little cruiser oil sitting up on your shoulder. They want to know how can it help them. They really do. I mean, to say that you in the Lord or to say you have something different that nobody else has, ugh, really, I mean, really, you know, but people only remember when what you have on your life affects them in a great way. It takes them off of a, off of a bad a path and put them, make them, make their crooked path straight. Well, it changes their mind about something. What well, makes the light bulb go off in their heart and in their mind? People remember that. So if you're so stuck into your little, well, how are you going to do it? You really are missing the greatest opportunity for God to do it through you, in you, and with you. And I, I, I'm speaking this because I've been through it. I, I'm telling you, I have done everything. God called me to do something in 1998. And from the moment he called me to do it, my life went completely backwards the other way. And I was going toward the thing that he called me to do. But everything in my life went back away from me the other way. Now, how is that possible? How is that possible? I'll tell you why. Because I was not allowing myself to rest enough in God that if he spoke it, he knows how to unfold it before my path. So I was going to help him out. You're not going to help God out. You, you, you're not going to do that. He don't need your help. He really doesn't. 
And so uh, getting back to Esther, Esther had to trust God in a new land around amongst people that didn't know him. They weren't, she wasn't any better than they were. They weren't any better than she was. She just had to trust God and learn God a new way. Because whether somebody believes what you believe or not, doesn't mean God is not with them. Doesn't mean God can't use them for the time that he needs for your life. And if we uh, become so fixated on, you know, how we feel about things and, and the way uh, we think it should be and not allow ourselves to be like children, you know, children, every day is a party for them. Every day is a new experience for them. Every single day. I don't care if you give a child a piece of candy at three o'clock at three thirty, they're going to ask you for something else. If you give them the bike that they ask you for on Monday, uh, on, on Tuesday, they're going to ask you for something else. Now they want lights to go with it. They don't care about that. They say, you the one that got what I need. <laughs> and so they come to you because you're the one that has what I need. And that's how we need to be with God. We need to be like children. Like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm going to keep living. I'm going to walk the way I think I should. Now, God, some things might come that I'm not sure of, but whatever you do, please don't let me be locked in my own mind. Please, if the if the situation comes to my life, let me walk it out. Let me embody it. Because here's the thing, you are not going to walk through the path or get to your, your destiny, your, your purpose. That's not a straight path. I mean, who said that that was a straight path? I, I don't, I don't, I, I have not known any path. <laughs> And I've been on the path for a long time. And I'll tell you, it has been everything but straight. Literally, it's been everything but straight. But what I can tell you what's been constant, what has been consistent, the road that has been consistent is my love for God. That's been consistent. No matter how I felt about the matter, no, how, no matter how it looked, the one thing that was straight in my life was that I was straight with is that I love God and I know he got this. Now, I don't understand it, God. I don't like this right now. I wish you would take this from me. I wish you would make that just show up tomorrow. Just make, just sit me in my destiny tomorrow. Just sit me in my purpose tomorrow. Why would he do that? When we have allow our lives to, to first of all, uh, our spiritual palace and our fleshly palace, the taste of some dainties in this life that we know we shouldn't have and that really can't go where we really where we're supposed to go. I mean, that place that we want God to unleash us in. I mean, some of the things on our lives, do we really want that to be unleashed in that new place? Think about that for a minute. I mean, some things that I knew I had to get rid of because if I kept that there, if I just sitting here talking to you today, if I had kept some things in my life that I had was involved in before, you wouldn't be listening to me today or you may would, but I don't think I would be helping you. I may it would be a part of your demise. I, I'm pretty sure I would be. And so, you know, I really, um, when I said, I, I'm going to keep saying it. I need you to relax when it comes to your destiny. Relax when it comes to your your purpose. Really, honestly, you're already in it. You just got to walk it out. You just got to keep walking. I remember, you know, I said to God, I said, God, I, I, I don't understand this. Why did you put me back here in this situation? I told you I wasn't coming back to this. And all I kept hearing God say, keep walking. Just keep walking. And I literally walked right into the thing I had been agonizing in my soul about. Like, how is this going to happen? And it was a matter of me walking. Why? Because what I had to walk through to get to it, there were people that were there waiting to hear, how'd you get right here? Because I got something else I'm getting ready to get to. And I don't know how to do it. Keep walking. When you see this, don't respond. When you see that, give it to God. You know, I, 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 I'm trying to drive this point as much as I can, because if you only knew how obsessed I was with this whole idea of purpose and destiny, it sent me into an emotional, uh, depressional state. I was, I was depressed for a long time because I did not understand. I said, God, I, I, I'm trying to get to this place. I want to get to this place. I want to get to this place. And I was, I was literally, had, I had developed OCD. Now, I mean, I'm being very transparent with you right now. I had developed <laughs> OCD because I thought I was going to find God behind every door. Like God was lost. He wasn't lost. He was there telling me to live. Because as I said before, and I, I said this uh, some years ago, I had a girlfriend of mine who had ALS and she passed away. And she was very, very dear to me. And I remember when she 
couple days before she died and I thought about life and I thought about the last conversation that I had with her. She had plans to have a huge business. And but but here's the thing. She touched my life in a way I could never repay her. Literally never repay her. And after I thought about it, I said, you know, we only come to do two things. Live and leave. Live the best life you can live. And when it's time to go, you better get up out of here. Go. But everything in between, that's up to you. But it's up to you when you align yourself with the mind of God. Not the mind of God. The mind of God says rest. Get in the seventh day about this purpose and this destiny. Pray that God will put people in your life that will help shape that for you. Get in the seventh day rest. Do you know that Israel was in disobedience all them years? It wasn't because they were sinning so greatly. Yeah, they were. But it was more more about the fact that they didn't trust God to do it, to bring them to the expected place. So they wasn't resting. And that angered God more because that's tied into unbelief. And so I just, I hope that I encourage you today. You know, when it was all said and done, Esther got up in that palace. And she had somebody assigned to her and had great favor with them. And he showed her how to become queen. So my, he showed her how to get favor with the king. And he and she did have it. And as a result, she was queen. She took, uh, she, she filled some heavy shoes. And God blessed her and God used her mightily. But it was at the appointed time when she got, to the place that she was supposed to get to, it was right on time. And she had to walk in that before God really used her for why he sent her there. See, there was a reason why she went. There was a reason why she went, but it was not until she got there and had to settle in that, that God began to unfold why she was really sent. Y'all, I had a great time with y'all. My time is up. I had a wonderful time. I hope to see y'all next Tuesday. Until we see each other again, it's color beauty. I want y'all to stay blessed because there's so many things to try to make you think you're not. But I tell you and declare, you are blessed to care.